Hey, good Sunday morning, everybody. It's Jason with JR Custom Designs. Um, today, I'm going to go over. I finished putting together my uh, Thunder Laser Nova 24 after tearing it apart to put some uh, LED light upgrades into it. Um, I'm going to go through and show you how I did it. Again, this is uh, this is a do-at-your-own-risk kind of thing. I'm just going to show you what I did um, to make it work for me. If you find another way or if you choose to do it the same way I did, you do it at your own risk. I'm not liable for any damages. Um, but I will show you the, the, the way I did it and the way that I know it will work. Because um, I tried several different ways, pop breakers, trip circuits, all kinds of stuff trying to figure out how to wire this in. Um, because they come basically with just enough juice to run the machine and when you tap into the 24 volt power supply uh, it causes glitching and resets on the machine so uh, without further ado I'm going to take you to the computer and I'll show you what I had purchased for this and uh, we'll go from there alright so just a little side note these uh, little crimp connectors that are that are meant for um, putting on terminal blocks um, so instead of soldering them or just putting them in there loose, you put them in here and you crimp them and then you stick them in the socket and tighten them down. Um, those are the little additional that I have for the rotaries that I build anyway, so I use those. And then if you look at the computer, um, if you already have these self-tapping screws, they're M4 by 10 or 12, it doesn't matter. I got the 12s, but um, if you already have a self-tapping screw about that size, that's all you need. You only need one. Uh, two if you want to really secure the power supply. Um, then down here, you have the uh, the quick connect terminals, which are the screw terminals that I use those those uh, connectors for. And this is just to make everything nice and neat and, and be able to remove it or uh, disconnect it as needed. And then I got the Meanwell LRS 15024 switching power supply. It's 156 watts. 24 volts at 6.5 amps. Single output. It's got it's got two sets of terminals, but it's a single single amperage output, so it's not a split output. Um, so the original the original power supply, which I'll show you later, is only like 75 watts and it's 3.2 amps, which um, pretty much was just enough to run the machine off of. Um, so. Every time I tried to hook the lights up and turn them on, the, the machine would glitch and, and reset. And then here we have the switches, uh, and I'll get to the location where I put those uh, on my machine. If you have the, the new machines with the seven pin connectors, the old switch where the rotary used to be turned on and off, you can put that in that location, which is what I tend to do, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, some other tools you're gonna need for this. Um, I use side cuts or flush cuts, um, a pair of wire strippers, or uh, a pair of needle nose or, or, or dikes or diagonal cutters, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and then a crimper tool here to crimp your connectors. You can use a pair of uh, needle nose, uh, but it doesn't quite come out right. Um, Cause this, when it crimps them, if you can see, little teeth in there it actually gives it texture so it's easier to bite onto and it actually gives dimples and crimping uh, onto the, the thing itself uh, here are the switches oh the LED lights let me take you back to the computer and I'll show you what I got for those all right so here are the LED lights that I purchased on Amazon uh, they're LED light strips waterproof daylight um, 60k outdoors or 6k outdoors um, I like to get these because these are the brightest you can get and the 2835s are the uh, the brightest you can get right now and they also um, they run a lot cooler they don't use as much power um, you can get the 5050s which have bigger LEDs but in a comparison these just barely edge out the 5050s um, which have been popular lately uh, but again these these are new a newer style and uh, they have 18 lumens per LED where the 5k only has uh, the, the the 5050s usually only have about 10 or 12 lumen per LED so uh, this is a lot brighter so that's what I got for the LEDs you got to cut them to length 
and then you got to wire the ends. Uh, the only thing I noticed about these LEDs, um, and I don't have a spare one, but anyways, the the connectors. Here, hold on a second. All right, so these these ends right here. Um, typically, I mean, I do a lot of stuff with these these type of lights. Um, and they're cut. They're cuttable every three lights. You can see the little copper strip. That's where you can cut them. Um, and then you're left with on each side. You're left with a little nub like that. Now these have a very, very, very thin copper layer. Um, so if you put the and I, fa I found this out, you know, the hard way, I guess. Um, if you put too much heat for too long on that, it'll actually melt that real thin copper that's on there um, and these are the only ones that I've really had that kind of issue with because like I said I do a lot with these these light strips and uh, and uh, this is the worst one for it it does work you just got to be careful um, not to, to overdo it with the heat um, so yeah that's pretty much it with that all right so on to the machine this is my Nova or Thunder Laser Nova 24. Um, I primarily use it for cups and tumblers and things like that. And here's kind of like a, a view of my workshop. <laughs> Very, a lot of stuff here. Um, but uh, it's home. Anyways, so um, with this machine, the, the normal lights that it has... They're tucked up under here. You got one there, and you got one there. Um, and they're just like a cool or a warm white um, color. And when you turn them on, it's a really like a yellowish kind of color, like an incandescent bulb would, would do. Um, and I don't like that. Not not because I would care to see what's going on when I'm engraving, um, but I do a lot of videos uh, and stuff, or intend to do a lot more videos with this. Um, and I like to be able to have it well lit so the, the camera can pick up um, what's going on with the, the laser at the time. So what I've done is, bear with me, so these are the old light strips that come out of the Thunder. Um, I'm not sure what they are, but they're, they're not the greatest. Um, and what I've done is I've taken those same lights that I just mentioned on the roll and I put a strip in there and a strip in there. And then also tied to that, so when the machine turns on, there's a strip, you can see it kind of here, there's a strip that runs along this back wall shining down to give some backlight on the back of the machine. And uh, this is what it looks like. So now instead of having that real dull, dingy white, you now have a nice bright work area. To you, so you can see it, video, whatever you're doing. Um, it just makes everything a lot easier to see. And I've also got, this is only half the lights that I have installed. So I'll show you the other half here in a second when I, uh, when I get to that point. Um, so what I've done is I've added uh, an additional light strip all the way around all the way around the bottom okay and then I've also added a light strip across the front to shine light from the front into the machine and what that does is you'll see here now is well first let me go over how this is all set up but anyway so I have those those lights wired in and what I did for the original lights that will come on when the machine is turned on I went ahead and just tapped into the power block there, the red and black, and then I also put a lead on the end to tie that other backlight into the side light here. Now, like I said before, the problem with this was is tying into that stuff, the, the machine would glitch because it overloaded the power supply and it would call, interrupt and cause a glitch in, in the system. So what I did to, to, to fix that is here is your new Meanwell power supply, 6.5 amp, 24 volt power supply. And it's got a spare set of, of lugs there so you can use a later date for whatever you want that runs on 24 volts. 
more lights or what have you. Um, but this replaced this little guy, which I've just stuck in here to keep it out of the way. Um, this little guy right here is what comes stock on it. And I'm sorry, it's uh, outputs 3.2 amps. I'm focus. 3.2 amps, 24 volts. So basically, what I've come to find out is this thing here just has enough power to to power the machine for the 24 volt setup that it has. Um, so that's why I switched to the larger, uh, more powerful box. Um, and from there, or not from there, but from the power supply, it runs through the normal circuitry. And then what I've done is I've tied into one of the lights on the side here and I've tied into the power supply for those lights here and run power down and around to the switch. I left it out so I could show you what it is. It's a two, two pole switch uh, and it's just on and off and what that does is now I will slide it into its spot and now it's tucked in there nice and neat. Um, and it's an exact fit for the for the machine itself. Um, and then what from there, it goes down through this hole, comes out, goes over, see the black and green wire, then it comes out here. And this right here is the lights. This goes to the the LED lights that I have run to the top, and it goes in through this panel here. And then comes out that hole right there where the the door sensor switch and stuff comes out of um, and it's nice neat tucked up out of the way and it won't it won't interfere with anything going on there um, and then from there you have the power coming down from the switch right here power and ground um, the ground the ground came in all the way from up here uninterrupted and it, it came down uninterrupted because the only thing you'll have hooked to the back of the switch is your power and your your power lead to the lights. The ground comes straight down to here and then from your switch this is your power to your LEDs from your switch and then of course that there. And then this is just attached with the 3 millimeter or M3 screw with a nut on the back to hold it in place because um, I didn't want to drill into any metal. And I figured it'd be just as easy to do it this way. Um, that way, hold on. That way it'd be easier to get to. Um, just a quick, quick connect, disconnect, whatever. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have to mess with any electronics, although I did try. Um, like I said, it kept tripping the power, but that was before I figured out that the 24 volt power supply was too weak. And uh, that's what you were left with. But anyway, so here is the normal operation. Now I'm going to flip the switch. And now you have all the extra light down there as well. You can see the difference without and with. All right, and that is selectable, so you don't have to have them on all the time. Um, but it's definitely a nicety to have, I mean, if you're shooting videos or just to have to see what's going on, um, they said most of my stuff was with the rotary on here, so it'll all be down low like that, so it'll have nice uh, crisp light on it, and hopefully to get rid of most, if any, of the shadows that it might have during the, f the videoing. But anyways, so off, on, off, on. All right, so now you've seen everything that I've done for this to add the LED lights to it. I do want to add that the LED lights that come with it do not have um, do not have ba uh, uh, adhesive backing. So you can use 3M body molding tape. Um, you can use this stuff here. It's called Venture Tape. It's a double-sided. Um, I don't know. It, I guess I use it for. I used to use it for fabric, for when I did uh, felt linings and stuff on on projects that I did. Um, but this stuff works really well, better than the other stuff that I showed on the other video, which is this stuff right here, the Olong 
or Oing Long, whatever that is, Chinese, Japanese. Um, better than this stuff here. This stuff holds, but it, it releases, whereas the other stuff, it holds and it hasn't released at all. So uh, I would say it is better. But anyways, if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to uh, contact me. I'll let you, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see other videos with the other things with this machine or my my Boss 3655 workbench back there or uh, my Nova 10 which is turned into a workbench at the moment uh, as well. Um, so let me know if you want to see anything else and uh, we'll see you next time.